I am your host, Kaz, and today we are joined by T-Jump and the Muslim Apologist. We're going to have a debate on whether or not Muhammad's marriage to Aisha was moral, and we are going to starting right now. So uh, I believe that T-Jump is going to go first. So, uh, Tom, at your first word, I will start your timer. All right. I want, what's, oh, why am I still muted? Oh, are you still what's, muted? The, what's the time limit? Uh, I believe 10 minutes. And are we live on Modern Day Debate? Because it's not showing we're live on Modern Day Debate. Oh, man. Jesus. Okay. Hold on. Thank you. Sorry. Let's do this again. All right, people of the internet, welcome to Modern Day Debate. We are live now. Uh, apparently, <laughs> the uh, there's a delay on the YouTube. Uh, so sorry about that. Uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have Tom Jump debating the Muslim apologist, and we're going to be debating whether or not Muhammad's marriage to Aisha was moral. We are starting right now. Tom, that's your first word. I will start your timer. All right. All right, so the topic today was, is... Um... Being married to a six-year-old girl and consummating that marriage at two with a nine-year-old girl, uh, pedophile. And yes, yes, it is. It's pedophilia. So Muhammad was, in fact, immoral. Um, and as Surah 33, verse 21 states, Muhammad is the pattern of conduct for all Muslims. And so this is why so many Muslims around the world are for uh, child marriage, because Muhammad did it. And so everyone else is allowed to do it, too, which is why Islam is an immoral religion. So the heart of the issue is what are the approaches that Muslims can take to try to placate this obviously immoral statement that is in the Quran. And there are three several approaches they can take. The primary three or one is to claim that uh, she was actually older. That wasn't actually nine, but this is false. Um, Aisha, they claim that Aisha was actually 16 or 17 or maybe even older and her pattern of con her conduct <clears throat> based on her pattern of conduct. Unfortunately for the proponents of that, for the claim that Aisha was older, defense this only works in an atmosphere of total ignorance of someone who's never read any of the Muslim sources related to Aisha. Um, once you start reading Islam's most trusted sources and you find the Hadith and after the Hadith, it says clearly that Aisha was nine years old when Muhammad had sex with her and you find any of those sources saying she, if you try to find any of those forces saying she was 16 or 18 there are none of them there's zero zero sources in the quran ever say that um ever there are many that say she was nine so uh, based on the quran based on hadiths she was nine um so if we take for example sahih al-bakari 51 58 uh narrated irwa the prophet wrote the marriage contracted with aisha she, uh, while she was six years old and consummated his marriage while with her while she was nine years old and remained with her with him for nine years <clears throat> till death see also sahib bukhari 3894 3896 51 33 and 51 34 which all agree that aisha was nine years old when muhammad had sex with her um sahib muslims 33 11 uh, aisha reports that allah apostle married her when she was seven years old and she was taken to his house as a bride when she was nine and her dolls were with her when at that time. Uh, so he Muslims 3309 and uh, 3310, which agree that Aisha was nine years old when Muhammad had sex with her and 2116 narrated Aisha. The messenger of Allah married me when I was narrated by Aisha when I was seven years old or six, seven, or six-year-old, and he had intercourse with me when I was nine years old. Also see Abdu Dubai, I mean, Dahabi, 49, 15, 49, 16, 49, 17, 49, 18, which all agree that Aisha was, you guessed it, nine years old when Muhammad had sex with her. Um, in Sai 3380, it was narrated that Aisha said, the messenger of Allah married me when I was six, and consummated that marriage with me when I was nine, and used to play with and i used to play with dolls see also suna udesi 3257 3258 3259 
3260 and 3381, which all agree that Aisha was once again nine years old when Muhammad had sex with her. Um, now we can continue going through the Sunnah Ibi Majah, the history of Atari and so on, which all agree that Aisha was nine years old when Muhammad had sex with her. But instead of continuing on with more sources that Aisha was nine years old, why don't we just find the sources that say she was 16 or 18? Because there aren't any. There, there are zero of them. None of them, none of them say that. Um, so to quote from Ibn Katir, one of the most respected Islamic scholars of all time, in his four-volume biography, Muhammad Ibn Katir quotes, uh, Irwa Ibn al-Zubar, Aisha's nephew, who says that Aisha was nine years old when Muhammad consummated his marriage, and with her, after quoting Irwa on the age of Aisha's, uh, Ibn Kathir says, this statement has contracted marriage with Aisha when she was six, thereafter consummated it with her when she was nine, is not disputed by anyone and is well established in the Sahih Sahih collections of tradition and elsewhere. When scholars disagreed on the issue, even Kahir would draw attention to the disagreement. But when it comes to Muhammad having sex with Isha when she was nine years old, Imam Kathir says that it is not disputed by anyone. Ibn Kathir would roll his eye, roll over in his grave if he heard modern Muslim scholars and apologists saying that Aisha was actually 16 or 18 to make Muslims feel better about their prophet. Um, I think our Muslim friends should take the advice of Shaki Yusur Qadi, who rebuked, who rebuked, buked Muslims who lie about the age of Aisha and he said Muslims don't apologize <clears throat> for the truth and don't distort the truth. There are Muslims that tried to deny this, um, that he didn't marry Aisha as young as that. And look, don't lie for the sake of our religion, for Allah as the truth. And we're not going to cover up the truth if people find out embarrassing things about it. So I will conclude there and let my opponent go. All right. Thank you so much, Tom, for that opening statement. We will go ahead and kick it over to uh, to the Muslim apologist at your first word. I will start your timer, sir. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah. So I'll begin with uh, saying, Assalamu ala manita ba'al huda. So I begin this statement with all absolute praise to the one true God of Abraham and his last messenger, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Was sola to was sala muala ashrafil and bia iwal musalim. Wala alihi was of the ajmain. Rubbish rahli sodri, while sirli amri wahlul ukdata milsani, yafko koli, ama bad. So the topic today is was Muhammad's marriage to Aisha Moro. Okay. So this issue has been used and abused by Christian polemicists, apostates, Islamophobes and every group imaginable who has an axe to grind against Islam. Which is of course hardly surprising because Islam is currently the fastest growing religion in the world. And according to Pew Research, by 2050, Islam will surpass Christianity as the largest religion globally. On the character and the morals of the Prophet himself, the well-known Orientalist W. Montgomery Ward said, in his day and generation, Muhammad was a social reformer, indeed a reformer even in the sphere of morals. He created a new system of social security and a new family structure, both of which were a vast improvement on what went before. In this way, he adapted for settled communities all that was best in the morality of the nomad and established a religious and a social framework for the life of the sex of the human race today. That is not the work of a traitor or a leecher. The historian Thomas Carlyle said, Our current hypothesis about Muhammad, that he was a scheming imposter, a falsehood incarnate, that his religion is a mere mass of quackery and fatuity, begins really to be now untenable to anyone. The lies which well-meaning zeal has heaped around this man are disgraceful to ourselves only. So the evidence for Aisha being betrothed at six years old and her marriage consummated, consummated at nine years old can be found in authentic hadith collections. And I do not feel that there is any need to cite these hadiths or object to their historicity. Going back to the issue at hand, we must first of all understand that this marriage took place roughly 1,400 years ago. As such, this marriage must be evaluated based on the standards of that time period while keeping in mind that we should not commit the logical fallacy of presentism. 
So the definition of presentism is thinking about history from an exclusively presentist point of view, which fails to take into account that at the time in which historical events occur, those involved did not enjoy the benefit of hindsight that has informed our present perspective. Presentism invites us to dismiss the poor decisions made by previous generations as having been based on their failure to anticipate the long-term consequences of their deeds. Yet to fully understand a historical event, we must view it not only with the benefit of hindsight, but also in the more limited context of its own times. So this can be easily determined by asking a series of questions, which I will propose as follows. First question, was Aisha's marriage objected to by the Prophet's contemporaries or even by her own parents? Her answer is no, it was not. Nobody objected to this marriage. None of the contemporary enemies of the Prophet Wasallam ever used this issue as a slight against the Prophet, simply because it was a non-issue. This problem, problem only came about in the 20th century, and the first person to raise this issue was as an objection to the character of the Prophet Wasallam was Sir William Moyer, a British Orientalist with Christian evangelical tendencies. Now the second question, did Aisha demonstrate any signs of abuse while she was in the household of the prophet till the day he passed away? Again, the answer is no. According to the Hadith and Sirah or biographical material that we have, Aisha was a happy and outgoing woman. In fact, the record suggests that she spoke her mind and was unafraid to voice out her dissatisfaction even to the prophet Wasallam himself if she were unhappy about a certain issue which affects her. In the years after the passing of the Prophet, she became renowned as a teacher of Islam, and decades later, she even led an army against the Caliph Ali. This certainly does not sound like an abused, manipulated person who was forcibly married off against her will when she was younger. Now the third question. Was it a common practice at the time to marry at such a young age? The answer is yes. It was a common practice of the era. This is determined by when women has attained puberty. And how do we know that a woman has reached puberty? By experiencing her first menstruation. Under Islamic law, a woman can only be legally married after she has attained puberty. Now, Neil Postman, a former professor at the New York University, wrote the book, The, Disapp the Disappearance of Childhood. In it, he argues that childhood was one of the great inventions of the Renaissance, just like any other social structure. Its development was closely correlated with the written tradition and development of primary schools as opposed to the oral tradition in the Middle Ages. So he states, in an oral world, there is not much of a concept of an adult and therefore even less of a child. And that is why in all the sources, one finds that in the Middle Ages, childhood ended at age seven. Why seven? Because that is the age at which children have command over speech. They can say and understand what adults can say and understand. They are able to know all secrets of the tongue, which are the only secrets they need to know. And this helps us to explain why the Catholic Church designated age seven as the age at which one was assumed to know the difference between right and wrong, the age of reason. It also helps us to explain why until the 17th century, the words used to denote young males could refer to men of 30, 40, or 50. For there were no such word in French, in German, or in English for a young male between the ages of seven and 16. The word child expressed kinship, not an age. But most of all, the oralism of the Middle Ages helps us to explain why there were no primary schools. For where biology determines communication competence, there is no need for such schools. And if you look at uh, the United States in, 19, in 1930, thousands of boys and girls married before the age of 14. It was re reported that 1,311 girls in East South Central area of the United States married below the age of 14. So now this brings us to our fourth question. Are there examples of young marriages throughout history what was the age of consent? So let us look at history and how marriage was practiced in earlier times before the 20th century. We have a long list of ancient kings and queens and individuals from Asia, Europe, Africa, and the Middle East 
being married off at an age as young as seven years old. So here are a few examples. According to the Bible, Rebecca was married off to Isaac, the father of the Jews, when she was three years old. Mary, the mother of Jesus in the New Testament, was 12 years old when she got married to Joseph, who was 90 years old. Akan Sernamun, she was around 16 years old, was married to a half-brother Tutankhamun, aged around 10 years old, in about 1332 BCE. Judith of Flanders, she was around 12 years old. She married Ethelwulf, king of Wessex, who was 61 years old. Ekdifu of Wessex, who was 16 years old, married to Charles the Simple, king of West Francia in, 19, in 919. Isabella of Jerusalem, aged 10 years old, married Humphrey IV of Thoron, who was aged around 17 years old in 1183. And they had betrothed when Isabella was eight years old. Okay. Isabella of Vailor, she was six years old. She married King Richard II of England, who was 29 years old. Eleanor of England, daughter of Eleanor of Aquitaine and Henry II of England. She married 15-year-old Alfonso um, VIII of Castile in 1170, when she was nine years old. Um, a more contemporary example, Miranelli Devi, who was aged around nine to 11 years old. She married Rabbi Nadav Tagore, who was 22 years old in 1883. So there's a whole list of this in Wikipedia. And um, I think the point has been made that young marriages were not considered to be problematic until very recently in the 12th, in the 20th century. Now the fifth and the final question. All right. Could the prophet's marriage to Aisha in any way, shape or form be considered as pedophilia? Okay. So please read the definition of what is a pedophile. And historical records does not at all suggest that the Prophet Wasallam met this criteria. Okay. Because he only had one marriage with a virgin, which was Aisha. His otherwise were all widows. They do not fit a definition of a pedophile. So in conclusion, we can therefore surmise that the marriage of Aisha to the Prophet was part of a practice totally congruent with his time period. And based on what I've already said, there is nothing to suggest that this marriage was immoral. And with that, I end my opening statement. Without lies, Islam thrives. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much for your opening statement, sir. And with uh, that, we will go ahead and pause. My phone the, is uh, beeping at me. One second. No problem. Uh, we're going to kick it into the open discussion in just a second. But before we do that, I just want to let everybody know that we are a neutral platform hosting debates on science, religion, and politics. And we want you to feel welcome no matter what walk of life you're from. And if you have a question or a comment for one of tonight's debaters, fire into the old live chat and tag me at Modern Day Debate. Super chats will go to the top of the list. All we ask is that you keep it civil right, and sorry, attack the argument and not the person. The insults will not be read. I uh, want to let you guys know that there's going to be an after, part, after show on uh, my channel that you guys can uh, check out. The link will be in the description shortly. And with that, um, I believe that, oh yeah, one more thing I wanted to let you guys know about is the debate coming up tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be uh, the red pill on trial. We're going to have Carissa and Jackson versus PWF and Sarah. And that's going to be at 8 p.m. They're going to be debating, is dating harder for men? So uh, go ahead and uh, like and subscribe and check that out if you would, uh, if you find that interesting. And with that, we will go ahead and open up the open discussion. And gentlemen, at your first word, the floor will be all yours. So I want to start with the last question, um, which was like the definition of pedophilia. Uh, definition is... Uh, where the preference for sexual activity with a prepudescent child or children, um, prepudescent is defined as not, ages 9 to 12, Aisha was 9, that makes him a pedophile. Uh, I was actually going to read uh, the definition from uh, the MSD manual for the consumer. So the full definition of a pedophile is defined as having had repeated intense sexually arousing fantasies, urges or behaviors, involving a child or children, usually age 13 years or under. Pedophilia is also medically defined as a mental disorder. Many pedophiles have or developed a substance use disorder or dependence and depression. They often come from dysfunctional families and marital <sighs> conflict is common. Many were sexually abused as children. So please tell me if the prophet is this criteria. Uh, yes, okay, because basically. being a pedophile doesn't require actual intentions. like. If you had sex with a child, even if you don't aren't attracted to so them, you're still a pedophile. Three, if the prophet was sexually abused as a child. Abuse. It has nothing to do with abuse. If you have sex with a it child. Here in the MSD stop, manual stop, 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 stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. What I say. No, no, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Okay, hold on, guys. 
Hold on. Let, let, I no, I get to hold answer. On, guys, you asked the question. On. I get to no, answer no, the question. No, 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 I'm the question. Yeah. I just said. What, what is the question? What is the question? And dependence and depression. So I ask you. None of that matters. No. So yes, the only criterion of what it requires to be a pedophile is you had sexual activity with a prepudescent child. Then That's it. Throwing, you're, you're intention doesn't stop out. talking oh. over me. Stop talking. Let's, 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 stop let's talking. let Tom finish his stop talking. Then you can can stop talking. Can you can you guys hear stop me? Stop talking. Yes, we can hear you. Um, okay. So the only thing that makes you a pedophile is if you had sexual activity with a child. I don't care about your intentions. I don't care about your desires. If you had sexual activity with a child, you're going to prison because you're a pedophile. That's it. There's no no psychological right, okay. don't care. Right, right. Muhammad had sex with a okay, nine-year-old girl. Let's, let's, right, he is right. a pedophile. Done. Okay, let's go with your 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 very narrow definition of pedophilia. Um, so um answer this question, please. Are you a moral uh objectionist, objectivist or uh, or subjectivist? Subjectivist. Objectivist, yeah. yes, I'm a moral objectivist. If you are an objectivist, then um, tell me why no one during the time of the prophet objected to this marriage. I did not understand that sentence. Why did no one, his contemporaries, during the time of the prophet following wasallam, ever objected to this marriage? I... Because you said it's <clears throat> you said the moral, the moral is objective. Well, they did actually. Then uh, it's I just father did. But... <clears throat> well, that, so. Moral objectivism is the position that facts are true independent of what anybody thinks. So asking me, why didn't a whole bunch of subjective people not disagree doesn't make a difference to moral objectivism. It's still going to be wrong whether or not his contemporaries agree. That doesn't make sense to me. I mean, if, if, if morality me... is objective, if morality is objective, yeah. then it should be standardized throughout all periods. Then everyone no. should have agreed. No, no, like it's an objective yes, fact. Is it's an objective fact the world is round. Is one sec, one sec. It's an objective fact the world is round. Not everyone agrees. Things that are objectively true are not objectively true because people agree. They're objectively true because they have a truth value independent of any opinions. It means it doesn't matter whether people agree. That's that's what objective means. Subjective means it's true contingent on opinions. So if you're thinking, well, why the society at the time didn't object, and you think that's fine, that's subjective morality. That's relative morality. If you think morality is objective, that means it's always wrong to do things, even if people don't know it's wrong. So like many, many years ago, most people thought slavery was just fine. They were wrong. They were all wrong. Everybody in that society who was totally fine with slavery were all wrong. It was immoral, whether they realized it or not. So the number of people who realize it doesn't matter to objective morality because objective means truth statements that are independent of what people think. Okay, all right. Um, if that's your opinion... Um... Well, this is the dictionary definition of objective. Subjective is contingent on opinions. Objective is it's independent the moral opinions. Not, not the definition of objectivity. Okay, so okay. Um, so um, I said moral objectivity. Moral yeah, objectivity. moral objectivity is the position that the truth values of moral thinking, statements is independent of any opinion. Still doesn't make sense what? to me. Okay, but I don't. What does? Yeah, I was going, I was thinking of a question. I, I can't see. Give me a moment. Give me a moment. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, yeah. So what about the marriages during during the time of uh, the ancient times? So all immoral. Uh, you know, They're all pedophiles. The They're all immoral. <laughs> oh really? They're all yep. pedophiles. Yep. So you just uh, admitted that the whole of Europe was 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 practicing pedophilia. Sure. Yes. People in the past did lots of immoral things, and they were all immoral people. Yep. If you have wow. sex with a child who is nine years old, you are a pedophile, and you are immoral at any time, at any point in history. Anytime, immoral. Doesn't I don't care what the society thinks. You're still immoral. But then you're committing the fallacy of presentism. No, that's so. Presentism is using the present moment to judge things. I'm not using the present moment. I'm using you the present moment. No, 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 no. You just, no, no, you just told no, me the no, whole of Europe no. was in pedophilia. So, so there's a difference between using a present cultural context to judge things and using an that's objective exactly standard. You're... To judge things if you're using that's an objective exactly standard to judge things that is not the same as a subjective modern social context presentism is using a modern social context to judge the past 
that would be a fallacy. Yes. If you have an objective standard that is independent of all time, then it doesn't matter if it's now or then. The objective standard applies to everything at all times equally. I think I still think that you're you're using the fallacy of presentism because uh, <sighs> you're saying you just you just told me that the whole of Europe is practicing pedophilism. You just told me that the contemporaries of the Prophet Solomon was Salam were also pedophiles. You're telling me that everyone else before the 20th century were all pedophiles. Uh, let me let me try to explain this a little differently. That's, that's so basically what you're telling me, right? Right, let me let me try to explain this a little differently. So back using your own standard against you, Tom. No, I'm not using I'm presentism. Using I'm trying to explain to you why I'm not using presentism to try to get you to understand. Like today, when physicists do math, they use general and special relativity. So if they're calculating the speed of light, they're not talking about science, they're no, no, talking no, about no, morality. Just, just, shush, shush, well, let him finish. Shush. Let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. So if we go back 300 years when people were using Newtonian mechanics and we're comparing their numbers, they say that the speed of light is 299 point something something. They were wrong because we can use general relativity, which is more accurate. Now, that's not using presentism. We're not just using a random social construct that we've made up to assess that they're wrong. We have a more accurate system that understands reality better than they do. And so there's a difference between presentism, which is using a cultural belief contingent on the society to judge other societies' cultural beliefs, and using an objective fact about reality, which can be demonstrated to show that they did it wrong in the past. Those are two different things. Does that make sense? You're there's still, there's you're a still fact. Using you're, you're, you're still no. using presentism. You're judging basically what you're doing. You're judging, you're judging the history. You're judging history based on what we are doing now. Yes, of course, today we When people, we just to clarify, when people were doing it, Newtonian mechanics, were they wrong? Let him finish. Let me finish. No, right. when I people were doing Newtonian me. mechanics, were they wrong? Let me finish. Let when me people finish. were doing yeah. Newtonian yeah. mechanics, were they wrong? Statement, Tom. Come on. Yes, 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 statement. Statement. I'm not interested in a yeah, statement. Right. When people were doing Newtonian mechanics, were they wrong? Yes or no? All right. Well, if you don't want to answer that, just go ahead and finish your question then. Um, I'm no. Going, I just want to finish the statement, all right? No. Like, so, your please. question is presentism. If you say people doing Newtonian mechanics were wrong, are you doing presentism? I don't I don't understand your question. Okay. So anyway, uh um, Newtonian mechanics, to to the past, people doing math in the past, were they wrong? No, they were not wrong. Why what? would they be wrong? So so like why would they be wrong? So the calculations of why Newtonian mechanics wrong? is incorrect. It does not describe things accurately. That's why we switched to general relativity. Math in the past, they got it wrong. Today we get it they right. They were limited right? by, the, by the knowledge of that time. So why why would it be wrong? Wrong, you know? Because it does not describe mean? reality. So if like you try to describe the orbit of the moon with Newtonian anyway, gravity, are, it's uh, wrong. Your, your example is about about mathematics and facts. Yes. It's not about about morality. Morality. No, is no, no. no. Morality is a fact. That's what objective morality means. If you believe it's in not. objective morality, you believe morality is fact, just like physics is fact. That's what objective morality means. Of course, physics are facts, but I'm talking about morality. <laughs> <laughs> yes, morality is a fact. Morality, mo objective morality, moral facts are facts, just like physics is people, facts. Um, it's still, you still, you still not making the point. You still don't, don't get the get, people in get the what audience. Did, did what I say just make sense? Was the connection between objective and facts and physics? Did that make sense to you guys? My chat is saying so, yeah. My chat makes it makes sense to Kaz. Uh, did that? Did my also, analogy make sense to you? Of course, but um. <laughs> I'm neutral. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense to me. You still, you're still using present presentism upon a culture that happened 1,400 years ago. Okay, you're you're judging history based on what we already what we are practicing now. And you know there are certain things in the past which would be considered immoral back then. Wait, wait, oh, I got another, I got another idea. Um, in the past, people thought objects that were heavier than air couldn't fly. Were they wrong? Uh, I guess so. Yeah. So. Yes. So today we know objects that are heavier than air can fly. Planes, planes can fly. But in the past, they thought they couldn't. Is that presentism or is that a fact? That's fact. That's not presentism. Right. Right. <laughs> so there are these things called facts that people in the past could just have yeah. been wrong about. Right. 
And so one of those could be morality. They could have been wrong about morality in the past, right? No, no, no not necessarily. So. No, no. <laughs> are, are you a moral no. relativist? I'm a moral realist. <laughs> okay, so so moral realism means that there are certain moral truths that are true objectively, meaning independent of time, right? Independent of opinion, like like facts in physics. They're true like facts of physics, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. So so if there's a fact of physics, just like there's a fact of morality, and people in the past didn't believe that fact, they would be wrong, right? I guess so, yeah. That would be the reasonable conclusion to make, yeah. Right, so but moral realism says there that. is some moral but, facts, and if people in the but past... But you, yeah, you haven't proven... But still, that still doesn't prove that the, the prophet's marriage to Aisha was oh. wrong. Okay? Oh. Right? It doesn't. It doesn't. It really doesn't. So okay. so if, if... Because you're still judging. You're still judging by what <sighs> uh, we're doing now oh okay, upon history. It's really that simple. Okay. So one of these moral facts, one of these objective moral facts is sex with people who can't consent is immoral. People who are children don't have intellectual ability to consent. Therefore, having sex to them is immoral. That's what this is one of those objective moral truths that's true dude, independent of time. You were on record, dude. You were on record saying that incest is okay. Yes. And that incest with consenting okay. adults. Incest with yeah. consenting yes, adults consent, is yeah. okay. I consider those things to be immoral. Okay, you're wrong. I consider those things to be immoral. That's 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 because you are basing on your uh, current no, tradition. I and remember, your current objective, time. object. I believe in objective morality. That yeah, means I believe in a system okay, independent right? of time. Yeah. But you are you're wrong. You're still wrong. To me, you're wrong. But okay. to you, you're right. So your okay. moral system says okay. pedophilia is okay. My says it's not okay. And we can just My let the people in the wrong. audience be like, what what moral system no, seems more right? Please correct your information. Islam doesn't say that pedophilia is right. Okay. Well, but you are judging. You are judging your your definition of pedophilia is so narrow that you apply it to the Prophet. Okay? Yes, I just gave like you the, the definition so, of pedophilia. So, okay, okay. So, I, I just gave you the wait, wait, wait. So, so if we go to a, if we go to a courtroom. That, if we go to a courtroom and and you had sex with a nine-year-old, are they going to to send you to jail? And label you a pedophile when they write that down the crime you committed. Of course, because it's our, because our time doesn't allow it. Okay, our current morals doesn't allow it. So this isn't just my our, definition. This isn't just a little little definition I've made up. This is like the definition of every court in every civilized bet, country in the world, right? Only, but the thing is, this is only happening now in the modern time. In back in those days, nine years old. Okay, was they were wrong back then. There was no courtrooms. Okay, there were no courtrooms. So, <laughs> all right. Okay, nine years old, oh, nine God. years old, nine years old women were considered to be childbearing and they need to marry, okay, in order to survive. Okay, you are an atheist, right? You believe in uh, evolutionary what? biology? Uh, what do you believe in the evolution in, in uh, survival of the fittest? I believe in evolution, yes. What about survival of the fittest? Uh, no, that's a shorthand for natural selection. Uh, okay, fine. Okay, I'll, I'll rephrase it. Okay, what about what about uh, sustaining the uh, progeny, continuing the line, going, continuing the biological line? Do you it's, do you do you believe that? It's not moral nor immoral. There's no imperative to do that. No. Okay, good. All right. So, uh, if someone back in those days, one thousand four hundred years ago, if the um, you know if the if the uh, mortality rate is such that they won't live up to you know forty years old or fifty years old. Would it be okay for them to have progeny before that? Uh, no, if they, if the intellectual capability of those who was who they were having sex with, you're not, didn't, you're not didn't have. Well, I'm trying to answer. You asked like if they only live to forty, would having sex would it be okay for them to have sex with people of their species below that age? That's your question, right? Pretty much, yes. Yes. So the the answer is it's only moral if they have the intellectual capability to consent wherever that age is. So it's only moral if they are intellectually developed enough to have the capability to consent. Aisha's parents and Aisha herself consented to the marriage. What do you say to that? 
she's nine. You can't consent when you were a child. That's literally a part of the law. So you're in denial because the records say that she consented to the marriage. You're in denial. <clears throat> no, so no, no. Finish. I won the debate. Uh huh. So yeah, you can you can claim that like if you claim a child consented to sex, you still go to jail. That doesn't that doesn't mean the fact that they you know they what? consented. I think, I think you you're not. I think you ignored my definition of what a child is because I read what? the definition of what a child is. Right? I quoted Neil Postman, right? What? I quoted Neil Postman that um, you know, in the Middle East. Right? Uh, oh my God! Okay, let, let me read. Okay, let me please um, cut. Cast. Is it okay if I read that? Read this out. Okay. Well, my definition sure. is a young human being below the age of puberty and below the legal age of majority. Uh, yes. Can I can I read out this message if, it's, yes. if you're okay with it? Yes. Yes. Right. Take. Okay. By all means. Okay, so Neil Postman, in the in his book, The Disappearance of Childhood, he's a former professor at New York University. He says that in an oral world where there is not much of a concept of an adult and therefore even less of a child, and that is why in all sources, one finds that in the Middle Ages, childhood ended at age seven. Why seven? Because that is the age at which children have command over speech. They can say and understand what adults can say. And then the of course the passage just goes on and talks about about uh, the attributes of uh, what defines a child back in the day. But basically, people before the the twentieth century, okay, they don't have this conception of child, okay, so they do not understand child <clears throat> as anyone below the age of seven, okay. Uh, sorry, yes, so they were the idiots because they didn't understand biology or cognitive science or yeah, philosophy just, or just, psychology. You just, you just, Basically, you're just throwing everyone out, out, out of the box. No, right? so no, I'm that's, saying that's they right. didn't understand right. modern science. Like, we understand right. how the brain and the body develop over time. We understand that children don't have the intellectual capacity to give consent at those ages because their brains haven't developed the ability to rationalize yet. Therefore, we don't count them as rational adults because we know psychologically their brains aren't capable of being rational adults. Back in the past, they didn't know these things. They were ignorant of facts. They didn't know facts. And so they made stupid decisions that were wrong because they didn't have the information to know they yeah. were wrong. Presentism all over again. Yes, presentism. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, You're doing presentism again. No, that's those <laughs> facts things. Those pesky facts things we agreed upon are not presentism. They're just facts. It's presentism because I just told you that the middle in the middle ages they don't consider a, a, a seven year old to be a child. Okay? And I already explained that that that's not presentism. That's a fact. Uh, you, you just like I said, you're just throwing everything under the bus. You deny every single definition I give, and you give your own definition. That's pretty much that's pretty much what what no, you're doing. That's okay? not what I'm doing. That's what you are doing. No, and I think the audience can see this. Right? <laughs> the audience can see this. <laughs> and you make cases and doing this and doing this will not change it. All right? Uh -huh. that's simple. Yes. That's, we we, we yeah. can ask the audience what they think my point was and if it made sense. And we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. So, yeah. If you have any questions, go ahead. Nope. You kind of just admitted I was right on everything. I don't, I don't really have anything else to go on. I didn't. I didn't proceed to anything. You just admitted that you were, you know. <laughs> You just admit that just admit that, that you know um anyone below the age of 40 as long as they give, as long as they give consent can you know can do whatever they want and i have clear records that aisha's parents and and aisha herself agreed to them i don't okay. think you know what any of the words i use mean oh, that's probably a problem yeah you can you can insult me however you want tom but you know that you know that i'm right okay <laughs> sure sure yeah Muted. Sorry, Cass, you're muted. Still muted. Still muted. Still muted. <clears throat> I have too much crap open on my uh, desktop right now. Um, so uh, you had mentioned that the Aisha's parents had consented for her. Um, can you talk more about how that works? How can a parent consent for a child? Uh, well, back in the or day. Um, like that? Um, yeah, like, like I said before in my in uh, my presentation, even um, anyone um, who has reached puberty are not considered to be children anymore. Okay, and um, in the adult culture, okay, uh, one must get either the girl's consent or the parents' consent. Okay, so um, uh, once the parents consented, therefore the marriage goes. But she's also given the opportunity to uh, reject the marriage if she when once she reaches puberty. Okay. 
And Aisha, um, we have the records. She um, she was married off at six years old and consummated at nine. She has every right to reject the marriage when she was nine, but she didn't. She moved in with the prophet, right? So uh, the marriage goes. So that is consent. That is consent. Okay. <clears throat> You can't consent unless you have the intellectual capacity to consent. So people who are like yeah, intellectually yeah, yeah. handicapped yeah, and children, yeah, shush, yeah. shush, yeah. shush, yeah. shush. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. You, just, you, just, you just gave your explanation. Yeah. Shush. Like, shush. Tom you're, just, you're just making up facts. Just let Tom respond there. to what you just said, please. Okay, but you can't consent unless you have the intellectual capability to consent which means children and people who are intellectually handicapped do not have the ability to consent. So even if they say they agree, that doesn't count as consent if they don't have the intellectual capability. And so having sex with them is still immoral. Sorry you didn't know that. Oh my, I don't know what else to say. I mean, uh, this guy just literally threw everything out where I sit out of the bus. Okay, so I already true, said that. Very you know, true, very uh, back, <laughs> back in the day, um, you know, uh, you know, um, there's no such thing as a child, okay, even if you are a seven year old or even you are a nine year old, okay. And it was about survival, it's about, it's about, uh, that's that is why I asked you the question, Tom, whether you believe whether you're okay with uh, anyone, uh, you know, marrying at 40, below 40 if they are, if the mortality rate is such that, you know, it requires them to marry. So the idea back then, okay, back in those days, okay, um, humans don't last long enough. Okay, so that is why they marry very young. Okay, then this is a practice mm -hmm. that has been going on even before. I mean, before the twentieth century. I gave examples of uh, of uh, you know marriages uh, in the ancient times. Okay, he just calls them pedophiles. Is is that simple, isn't it? To argue this way, but it doesn't change the fact that um, there's nothing there's nothing immoral about it because it was a normal practice at the time. Okay, the prophets contemporaries they certainly didn't reject it. They could have used every single excuse to. To uh, reject his message, he could have used this argument against him, but they did not. Why they did not use this message? Uh, they did not, did not use this argument against the prophet because uh, they were doing it. Okay, they were doing it, so there was no issues. And it was only until the twentieth century where William Moore started to uh, raise this issue against uh, the prophet. Okay, there were Christian polemicists throughout the ages, Tom. Okay, they could, <laughs> he could, like for example, John of Damascus was the first Christian polemicist against Islam. Okay, he could have used this argument against the prophet you could say oh the prophet was a false prophet because he married aisha when she was six years old or and consummated the marriage when she was nine why didn't he use this argument though okay why did he, he use an idiot this argument? that's why he you didn't cannot, understand you cannot go morality an idiot and use it as argument, Tom. that's not an argument that's emotional no that's like if someone you didn't make an facts, facts. No. You, said, you said you want the fact so just give me a fact i'm not sure who give me a fact uh one of us is there's an echo somewhere but uh yeah so if he didn't know a better argument existed to prove muhammad was a not prophet yeah all access, he was an, yeah, all shush access. shush shush then he was an yeah, idiot he was ignorant of the facts of the better argument so i can make a better argument muhammad was a pedophile that proves he's not the not the so that's your argument everyone were, else were idiots everyone were pedophiles during the time yes that's your argument fine sure doesn't change anything. Yeah, and your yours is well. At the time, they were fine with it. Therefore, it's perfectly moral. Totally not a justification for literally that. every. I didn't crime say ever. it was. I, I didn't say it was either moral or immoral. I just said it was a practice at the time, but it was right. certainly not immoral. Which, okay. I, don't I didn't. That. I didn't argue for morality. I didn't argue for positiveness. Uh, of the marriage, okay. I didn't argue for the negativeness of the marriage. I'm very. I think neutral you just destroyed it. yourself on that one. So if you're admitting that what people I think. If you're admitting, Tom, Tom, if you're admitting Tom, your second, argument second, is second, second, everyone else were idiots second, and they were all pedophilia. So That's if you think it. that okay. if you agree that the fact that all those people thought something or didn't think something is completely independent of whether or not it's moral, then that shows that whether or not they thought or agreed with it is completely irrelevant to the question. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Which I, I that's that's correct. It is irrelevant, but then you've just wasted like every minute of what you've said because that's all you've brought up is something that's completely irrelevant. Presentism. Yeah. <laughs> Are we done yet? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> I guess we could go to Q and A if you really have nothing else to argue about. Um, I don't think so. I mean, uh, the guy just could, that could, could you maybe is... uh, talk about uh, how? I mean, 
Muslim apologist, you did just say that um, uh, you didn't have an opinion of whether or not it was moral or immoral. Can you maybe expound upon what you do think about it? Especially um, in like I believe, present time? Yeah, I believe. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, sorry, Kes. Okay. So basically, I believe as a Muslim, of course, I revere and honor the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. I believe that he's a true messenger of God. At the same time, okay, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a man of his times. He adhered to the cultural uh, mores of his time okay so it's neither moral or immoral i mean the prophet uh, owned slaves okay so um the prophet married more than four wives so first the of prophet all went to war yes so okay there are certain things with the which the prophet did, did which were you not know, within the confines of his times which today will be considered wrong or immoral okay by presentism okay so um the prophet had to uh, uh the prophet basically Work was constrained by the limits of his times. Okay, if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were living in our times today, I believe that uh, you know um, he probably would not have married Aisha at six years old because uh, not because it was immoral or anything of the sort, but because he wanted to show as an example to the other Muslims how the right uh, marriage should be. Okay, I believe that she he would probably marry her maybe a little bit older, probably not eighteen, probably I don't know. When um, maybe a bit older, maybe um, 15 or 16, all right? Okay, it's possible. Okay, but he was constrained by his times. At the time, it was totally normal to marry at six. Everyone else was doing it. It's neither a moral or immoral argument. Okay, it was just something confined within the time period, and everyone else was doing it. Okay, it's not it's not, it's not a matter of morality here. Okay, it's more of a matter of culture, laws, and tradition. Okay, what's the title? And, um, what's the title of the debate? Interesting, interesting, we have 22 Indian, minutes left on the open discussion. East, okay, the Middle East. Um, sorry, the the Europeans are practicing this. What was so the title? What was the title of the debate? Uh, what yeah, was so, Muhammad's marriage to Aisha moral? Yeah, what was the previous sentence? What was the previous sentence you just said about whether or not people? I said it was moral. neither moral or immoral. That's all. Okay, neither moral or immoral. But if if, if we are going to ask this question, okay, was moral, Muhammad's marriage to Aisha moral? My answer is it was not moral. Okay, that's all. Okay. Perhaps um, separate from Muhammad, if we could just talk about anybody marrying a nine-year-old uh, right. in any time period, right. what do you think about the, the actual moral impact of child marriage, I guess? Um, like, like, I said, like I said, I gave examples before, right? Um, I think they were constrained by that time period also. Okay, and I want to, uh, basically it's all about uh, survival of the fetus and extending their progeny. So of course they're going to marry young because the death rate, I mean the the, the mortality rate is is uh, you know, makes it so that um, they probably will not survive before beyond the age of forty. Okay, so they needed to marry young in order to have, especially the the kings of Europe and you know the kings of Egypt in the ancient times. So they they know this, they knew this. You know they will probably die in battle, they probably die in war or famine or whatever it is. Okay, so um, they had to marry young. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, Tom, if you don't want to respond to that, maybe uh, you could talk a little bit about how you do determine um, proper ages for consent, maybe? I mentioned that already. We use psychological development, yeah, whether or not they're cognitively capable to make decisions and rationally analyze consequences of certain decisions. And so once they are both physically and mentally capable, so we can, we can also look at the physical harm done to bodies who are prepubescent when they do get pregnant and recognize that it destroys their bodies and causes them significant amounts of unnecessary harm. That's another reason why we don't allow those kinds of things. <clears throat> so both the physical and psychological development are the criterions that we use to establish whether or not it's consensual to have sex with someone. Can I respond, Can respond to, that? to that? Yeah, please. Yeah. So um, he hasn't shown any evidence that, uh, you know, uh, Aisha's pre this pubescent body was destroyed during having this so-called, uh, you know, consummation of measure. And, you know, whether Aisha was emotionally uh, disturbed or emotionally uh, destroyed during this marriage to the Prophet. He has not shown any evidence for this. That part's not part of the definition. So whether or not you're emotionally destroyed doesn't actually make a difference. It's still pedophilia. So you're, you're just being biased. No, I'm just it's being moral. 
I'm being moral. That's the that's the word you you're just for. you just told me you just said just now that uh, you know having a this uh having a previous marriage will cause emotional destruction, destroy the bodies, blah blah blah. But show evidence for that that it happened to Aisha. No, 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 no. I said that it doesn't make a difference whether or not it emotionally damages the child or not. It's still pedophilia. So even even if it doesn't emotionally damage the child, still pedophilia. Yeah. So you're just being stubborn. No, I'm being moral. Well, I mean, we can move to the Q&A, I suppose, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you do have a super a question for uh, the debaters tonight, Super Chats will go to the top of the list. We do have quite a, a list already, so it is building pretty quickly. But uh, I can go ahead and move into that if you guys want to do that. Yes, please save me. All right. I got a Super Chat from... Let me uh, just quickly switch over to the timer so that we can keep track. Um, one second. So sorry. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just want to let you know that our guests are linked in the description below. So if you like what you heard from either of them tonight, you can go ahead and click those links right now and uh, you'll be able to check out more from them. I also want to let you guys know that uh, you should definitely click the like and subscribe button. We have more debates coming your way and you don't want to miss those. And I now have my timer pretty much set. So we will go ahead and move to the Q&A. Sorry, I was not prepared for that. Um, so, here we go. 35 minutes on the clock. First question from Thunderstorm, 499. Do, don't both atheists and Muslims believe in geology with the stone of Mecca? I don't know what that means. I have no idea what the question means. <laughs> All right. Well, the next question is from Bitter Truth for $10. They say, Muhammad married Aisha when she was six and intercourse when she was nine. She hasn't reached her puberty. Also, Muhammad was um, thinking, uh, I'm not sure what this word is, while she had, while she was six. Hadith say, Muslim, he was sick. Um, that, I think that is factually, uh, there's some mistakes there. Um, the prophet did marry Aisha when she was six and he waited until she reached puberty when she was nine. Okay. So if the prophet was a leecher, was a pedophile, was someone who is sexually, uh, uh, attracted to young girls as, you know, some people accuse him of, then he would have just consummated the marriage when she was six. So why did the prophet had to wait until, you know, she was nine years old. Okay. Until she reached puberty. Yeah. Okay. From Melody Kate for 999, they say, You cite so many royals and use it to justify the prophet's action. But according to you, he was God, so he should know better, right? He was not a regular person, or was he? As Muslims, we don't believe that the Prophet ﷺ was God. Okay, that is a Christian belief. They believe that you know, the Prophet Jesus Salam, was God. Okay, I'm not a Christian. I don't believe that. The prophet was God incarnate walking on earth. He's a human, he's a regular human just like us. And he worked between, you know, he works between the mores of his time and more and, and traditions. Okay. He's not going to go into us in a time machine and go to the future and say, Oh, look, pedophilia is uh wrong. Okay. Or pedophilia is a oh, this is considered pedophilia, and then he comes back and then he does whatever he needs to do. No, he has to work within the constraints of his time. Okay. Got it. From Zagros Oskan for 199, he says he saw Aisha in his dreams, so he fantasized too. That was a vision from God. We as Muslims, we believe that it's a vision from God. He originally, the Prophet Wasallam, did not want to marry Aisha until he received that vision. Okay. All right. So either either God All is right. also a pedophile or it was made up and Muhammad was a pedophile. So those are the two options. God, pedophile, or God made up. Those are the two options. Uh, do you want to take the last word on that? No, nah, he's just being insulting. That's all. All right. From Bitter Truth, they say, um, the father of Aisha was against the marriage. Said He said, I'm Muhammad's brother. She is niece. Muhammad said, he's not my real father. I can still marry Abu... Bakar was sacred. Hadith said, even history books, Muslim, why lying? Yeah, so uh, the explanation for that is basically during uh, uh, the Quraysh in that in that time period, okay, in that era, 
uh, the practice of the Arabs was that uh, when someone considers you to be a brother, they consider even though they are not blood brothers, but they when someone considers you to be a brother, then um, they will treat you like a brother, like a blood brother. So that is why when uh, when the Prophet uh, expressed his intention to marry Aisha, because Abu Bakr uh, Rodiwa An considered uh, the Prophet to be his brother, his, uh, almost like a blood brother. Therefore, he asked. He was surprised, and he asked why. You know, why would the prophet you know, marry his daughter because they are like brothers that like blood brothers so he so the prophet said that uh, we are not blood we are not brothers by blood so it is all right so this is actually an example by the prophet to show that um uh, islam only considers uh, someone to be related only by blood not by uh, relative mores or you know by friendship or whatever only the bond of blood is stronger than anything else right got it from Thunderstorm for four ninety nine, they say nine year olds is all kinds of wrong. I as I already explained in uh, in my opening speech. I mean, did that guy didn't uh, listen? <laughs> did that guy not listen to my opening statement? I've already defined what is a child, and I've already shown examples of European kings practicing uh, this. Uh, which the my opening says they are all pedophile. Okay, that's just throwing everyone under the bus, all right? So, um, uh, <laughs> throwing uh, the pedophiles under the bus. Back then, uh, puberty is considered, <laughs> yeah, pedo, uh, basically, um, back then, anyone who has reached puberty is an adult. It's, that's pretty much it. And Aisha was an adult by all definitions of that time, okay? Got it. From Ozzy and the Gamer for five dollars, they say, uh, for Muslim apologists, it is not moral just because it was legal. Your quote unquote profits were immoral. You are a relativist. It's not presentism, and they were ignorant. I will say that the questioner he's also he's also a presentist. He's just throwing everyone under the bus. I've already explained this. Got it. From ES one thousand and two for two euros, I think. Uh, for you, Muslim apologists, if you lived in that time, would you copy him? Yes, I would. Of course. <laughs> because he's my prophet. It's the best uh, example of men. God. From Mars Squeeze for five dollars, I say, where is Chris Hansen? That's a, a joke. Uh, from Industrial Nerd for two dollars, I say, little girls are okay, but not bacon. I don't get what that means. <laughs> oh, I think he's They're talking asking about why about it's that. okay to. Uh, marry a prepubescent girl but not eat bacon oh um yeah is, is it that again this goes back to my original statement I, I think i don't want to repeat that again i've repeated it so many times bacon is uh forbidden by the quran it's an explicit uh commandment okay so yeah got it from jupiter darman for five dollars i say i feel like i've spent an hour listening to someone tell me why an adult marrying a six-year-old was perfectly fine am i right love yep. you t-jump and god bless that chair yep that's about right can i respond to that sure yeah so uh yeah um it is um it is something of a of a of a common practice by islamophobes and trolls and you know this ignorance to <laughs> repeat the claim that, that the prophet was mm -hmm. Uh, married Aisha when she was six and consummated the marriage at nine. They forget that there's a three-year gap between the marriage, between this both this uh, marriage and consummation. Okay? So they need to answer the question: Why was it that the Prophet Sallallahu waited until she was nine years old? Please answer the question. I don't know. Got it. From hates, from so hates stairs for five dollars. They say. Go ahead. Okay. From to the Muslim apologist, was it immoral to kill someone before Cain killed Abel? Yes. Yes, it was. Interesting. Um, that looks like this. The, that's the end of my uh, super chat list. So if you have a burning question for one of our tonight's debaters and you really want to make sure that it gets answered, then you can go ahead and fire into the old live chat and as a super chat. But if not, then uh, I will go ahead and move on to the other questions from. Uh, Sahih Luke, question for T-Jump. You cherry-picked the hadith that says Aisha was nine, but why you didn't quote the hadith that mentioned she was 19 years old? Are you not suppressing the evidence? There are none. 
There are none that said she was 19 when they consummated. That doesn't exist. Uh, Muslim apologist, is there such a Sadith, hadith that says that? Well, um, <clears throat> okay, so there are some uh, scholars who um, who deny, not deny, they, they criticize the hadith which mentioned that uh, Aisha was uh, six years old and consummated the marriage at nine. So they look at other ex uh, external evidence, like for example, her, her sister, okay? Her sister um, was around um, 20 years old and um, based on that uh, understanding, therefore, the age gap between her sister and and um, Aisha is was about a few years in, dif in difference, and since that particular hadith, at the same time which uh, the Prophet allegedly married Aisha at the time, okay, I mean married Aisha at the time, uh, the, the the difference between the ages is such that it can be possible for Aisha to be uh, sex according to this uh, to this methodology. But um, I myself I don't adhere to this because I believe that uh, there are serious implications if we if I or if we as Muslims use this methodology. So I'm just going with the uh, literal evidence. And um, I believe in this hadith wholeheartedly that the Prophet Sallallahu married Aisha when she was six years old and uh, consummated the marriage at puberty when she was nine years old. So I have no problems with it. Okay. Got it. Super chat from Bitter Truth for five dollars. They say, "Kaz, can you please arrange my debate with Muslim apologists on the same topic?" And uh, I would probably uh, do that. Uh, send me an email or um, link me, link up with me on uh, Twitter or whatever, and we can see what we can do. Sure. Uh, can I can I can I say from... something about that? I'm sorry. Can I say something? About... Can I say something sure, about sure. that? Please. Yeah. Please so uh, for that that guy who wants to debate me, um, I have um a live stream every week, so you can jump on and talk to me about it. You're free to do so. I, I got go. a question uh, from Don. He is linked to the description end. below. I got a question go from Don on my end. Uh, would Muslim apologists allow his daughter to be married at the same age as Aisha? If it's, if it's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then yes, of course. Of course, we have a doubt in the blink of an eye. Did you say only for the Prophet? Is that what you said? Yes. Sir? Yes. God. From Bob's note. Uh, I need to read it. Uh, Bob's no, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, from ES1002 for two euros. Um, they want to know about your criminal record, Muslim apologists. Okay, sure. I will explain that. All right. <clears throat> so um, two years ago, okay, I was, uh, <clears throat> my, whole, my house was raided and uh, I was first falsely accused of a crime, uh, unfortunately, which is, which is related to pedophilia, okay, possession of child pedophilia, okay. So uh, the police, okay, the Malaysian police, these uh, these uh, criminals, okay, called the Malaysian police. They raided my home without a warrant. Uh, they took my my stuff. They took my uh, desktop. Okay, this is not the desktop that they took, but this is the exact room where they they conducted the raid. Okay, so I was arrested. Okay, I was put in a lockup for three days, and then I was released, and then there was nothing ever since. Okay, so to those people who keep repeating this lie over and over again, I do have a team of lawyers who are actually going to sue the Malaysian police over this and it is in the works I can't reveal any details but if anyone in the chat repeats this lie over and over again I will instruct my lawyers to hunt them down and sue them for like three that's it got it all right from Kwani upstate for five dollars they say if the Quran is perfect and needs no correction or editing then does the Muslim apologist agree with marrying young girls today or does he disagree uh, sorry, could you could you repeat the question again? I couldn't hear. Sure. If the Quran is perfect and needs no correction or editing, then does the Muslim apologist agree with marrying young girls today, or does he disagree? Uh, the Quran says that um, women can be married off at puberty, and um, if the um, if the rule of, if our authority, our political authorities allow for it, like for example, there are many countries where the age of consent is. 14 years old, 15 years old, sometimes 18, sometimes 21. So it depends on your locality. If the authorities allow for it, then why not? Got it. From Jeremy Nolan, uh, what age is someone not a child, T-Jump? Um, when they're an adult. So like, <clears throat> say like 16 to 20, something like that. Got it. From Don Fullman for five dollars, I say Tom that? Jump. Can I answer that? Okay, so um, 
in my country okay someone is considered to be an adult when uh, he or she reaches uh, 21 years old so i guess anyone else who marries below that age is a pedophile right no pedophile is about prepubescent it only applies to 9 to 12. <clears throat> but you just said that uh, someone who reaches a six, age of 16 is an, is an adult in my country it's considered to be a child okay so but what's your standard pedophile only applies to prepubescent so so that's that's a different you're not answering my question i'm saying that in my country in, in, in order to legal laws here you only reach the age of an adult when you are 21 years old okay so is anyone below the age of 21 a child yes <clears throat> well no not based your on your country no so it changes according to locality right no i think there's objective facts it's not based on not based on society at all Never mind. I rest my kid. Got it. From Don Fullman for five dollars. They say for Tom Jump, would you allow your daughter to be married at the same age in the time of Muhammad? No. Got it. From Yeshua the King for four ninety nine. They say Reliance of the Traveler and the Hadia are Islamic books that allow marriage to a nine year old who hits puberty even today if Islam rules the land. I've already actually talked about uh, the reliance of the traveler in my uh, debate with the Prophet, Prophet. I said that the reliance of the traveler is not reliable. It's not considered to be something authoritative. We have other authoritative works like the Muwata, like uh, Subuh Salam. Okay, there's so many books. Okay, there's so many Bulugun Maram. There's so many other uh, authoritative books in in the Islamic world, and reliance of the traveler is not one of them. Are you saying that he's wrong and that the reliance of the traveler does not agree with you? Basically, I'm saying that uh, the reliance of the traveler is not is not considered to be authoritative. That's all in the Muslim world. Ivan, got it. Okay, from Mark for twenty dollars. Thank you so much, Mark. God slash Allah, Judaism to Islam is inherently wrong, morally speaking, nine out of ten times. So, how do you justify his commands? um i mean he doesn't give any real examples i guess i guess um i'll just answer it generally okay so uh as muslims we believe that uh you know, god throughout the ages sent down his messengers to proclaim uh, the message of truth to the worship of the one true god abraham and um, in each uh, time period in each uh, situation there are differences in the laws and mores. like for example uh moses musa salam, he would be more uh, militaristic because the situation commands for it during Jesus's time he would be more uh, soft he would be more apologetic because of the situation that calls for it he can't go against the Roman Empire and uh, during the time of Muhammad Wasallam, the laws are also different because it suits the time and the time period and the, and the situation and uh, we also believe that you know uh, so with the coming of the Prophet the last messenger of God therefore the laws are applicable throughout all times so yeah got it all right from miss stella for five dollars they say so are we just deciding on what our moral morals are based on that the law allows i'm just giving examples you see because uh because uh my opponent he's shifting the goalposts he keeps changing his position okay yeah so you can just watch back the recording and see how what he has done Got it from ES one thousand and two for two euros. What if Aisha hit puberty after nine years old? Then the prophet will have waited until she reached puberty. Yeah, let's say if she reached puberty at fourteen, then the prophet will have waited and she was until she was fourteen years old. Because you cannot marry, you cannot consummate the marriage uh, before uh, you know you reach puberty. It's basically, that's it. Yeah. Got it from Yeshua the King for one ninety nine. They say. Islam proves the authenticity of the reliance. Or no, he Islam doesn't. Maka. I'm not sure. He 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 may have been. I S L A M Q A. Yeah, the question doesn't make any sense anyway because uh, it's like putting the chicken before the egg or the egg before the chicken. Got it. From Notion Slave for four ninety nine, they say, have some self awareness and quit debating when you have, uh, pedophilia charges. This is embarrassing. As I said earlier, uh, my lawyers are you know on standby. If I were to, uh, if you repeat the lie against me, I will 
instruct my lawyers to sue you for libel. It's very decent. Got it. From Nix for $10, they say, so if your country recognizes adulthood at 21, how can you say that a child is capable of making the very adult decision to have a sexual relationship with anyone, much less an adult? But you see, in Malaysia, it's a, it's a bit unique. Uh, I, I think this is a practice in other countries anyway, but uh, I'm speaking in the context of Malaysia. So if let's say if someone who is uh, 12 years old, uh, they, for some reason, he or she wants to get married, uh, they will need to petition the courts and the court here will uh, hear the case and um, listen to it and decide whether they are suited for marriage if the court says that they are not allowed to be married due to other reasons you know even though if they may have reached puberty at 12 years old then it will not continue it's very got it from okay so that's in the super chats ladies and gentlemen if you have any more go ahead and send them in uh from envix they ask they didn't allow adult women to consent. Why would they allow a nine-year-old to consent? As I've already said uh, earlier, I think I've already repeated this so many times. Okay, the, the the parents of Aisha did not object to the marriage; they consented. Okay, and the prophet waited until she reached puberty and uh, she went into his household. If Aisha wanted to reject this marriage, she could have said no. She could have been, you know, because she already reached puberty, she's considered to be an adult fit enough to make her own decisions got it matt lee for two dollars they say cringe and then another question from free your mind modern day debate question for t jump is it morally acceptable for ai pedo porn movie or a game uh pictures being generated that aren't of real people i don't really care about it. there's not immoral no Got it. Uh, from Yeshua to King for 199, they say Islam Q and A website proves the book to be authentic. I don't care what Q, Islam Q and A says, okay? Because uh, we don't have the translation of the Reliance of the Travel in my, even in my mother tongue here in Malaysia or in this region for that matter. And we have so many translations of other works uh, in, in, in my mother tongue. So it's not authoritative enough to be, if it's not authoritative enough to be considered for translation, then it's not it's useless right got it from ames mcdougall did aisha's parents sell her off the short answer is no okay from free your mind uh what's your take on the low birth crisis women working a factory and do you think we need women to give birth and men to father a family to keep the population going? No, who cares about the population? If the population goes down, oh well, it's not a bad thing. As long as we have AI to make up for the work, it doesn't matter if we have population or not. Can I answer that? Got it. Sure. Okay, so um, I believe in the uh, family unit. Okay, so I think I've already uh, said this so many times, even during the past debates that um, Islam um, promotes the family unit and ensures that uh, you know the human race continues. Therefore, um, uh, it encourages marriages and um, yeah, so uh, the continuance of the uh, line, okay, the biological line of humans. And you do it uh, while, you know, ensuring that the man uh, is as the leader of the family and the woman as the leader of the household. Yeah. Okay from j jacob grosek question for muslim apologist of course from a muslim perspective aisha's marriage can be seen to be moral but why should people who don't hold a muslim morality accept this to be moral because uh, marriages at puberty was considered to be normal back then okay so yeah i mean the standard is uh, the standard for adulthood was puberty and the conditions of the time period Okay. It's a combination of factors. You can't just simply accuse someone of being uh, a pedophile just because he or she got married at or consummated a marriage or se have sexual relations when uh, when she was nine years old. How do you determine whether nine years old is uh, is uh, below uh, is is mentally incompetent or whatever it is that you know spill? <laughs> Because it's before puberty, that would be that's the answer. That's how you that's how you do it. 
<laughs> yeah, but I just said that Aisha would reach puberty when she was nine. You just said that she, you know, nine to twelve is all before puberty. Puberty is after twelve. She was she reached her puberty. She had a menses at nine. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Next question from ES one zero zero two for two euros. I think Aisha would couldn't have a baby due to fistula. Um, I think I would think that this um I, I wouldn't know about the medical condition of Aisha. She I mean, you no, know, because um the Prophet's wives after Khatija never did, you know, have any child from the from the Prophet Wasallam. Okay, so um but they had child children from their previous marriages, okay, except for Aisha, of course, as I mentioned that Aisha was a virgin, so of course not. Um, but that being said, uh, I believe that this is with divine uh, ordinance that there is a reason why uh, you know uh, the prophet did not have any children after his marriage with Khatija. Okay, by the way, his marriage with Khatija, uh, he had about five or six children with her. Okay, with Aisha. Well, Aisha, none. Yeah, none. Oh, do you know anything about this fistula? Uh, it's a medical condition where skin fuses together. I don't know what what it is related to. Aisha, or how it would relate to Aisha? I'm, I'm just wondering, did she actually have something like that? How should no, I? Not that I know of. There, there is that nothing described in the hadith. That, uh, you know, no, okay. There's no hadith that mentions this. Yeah. Strange. Um, from Bitter Truth for five dollars, they say Sahih Bukhari uh, five two three six. Aisha hasn't reached her puberty age while Muhammad intercoursed. Aisha, Muslim, why are you lying? I would say that person is lying because we have all the records that say that she reached puberty when she was nine years old and she had a menses when she was nine years old got it uh next question from mark for five dollars they say didn't answer the question just use the old testament new testament and the quran to back up the same documents uh i don't understand what that means i don't understand the question sorry um i don't remember mark but okay, let's move on. Uh, next question is from Learn Every Day, Seek Knowledge. Uh, youngest girls who get pregnant at what age? Health, you mean safely? I'm guessing. I mean, I know that I saw a report of one, like, I think five year old that got pregnant once, but that was because she was being molested by her father. Anyways, uh, from Mark for five dollars, they say, uh, "T jump." Sometimes I don't agree with you, but here I'm on your side. That's right. I'm always correct. No, you're not. Got it. <laughs> from pro debate. From pro debates. Uh, at what age do women go through puberty? Can he cite a source on this? I'm not sure who we, they're talking about. No, I can. I can. Um, I have many sources. Actually, on my website, I actually cited many sources where. Uh, women reach puberty faster in uh, in extreme climates. Like for example, if you are in the Arctic or if you are in a desert or in the Sahara Desert, then you will reach puberty earlier than other people in the region, uh, in other regions. Okay, so um, I unfortunately I don't have the, the facts and figures here, but you can go to my website. Um, it's called Bismika Awahuma. Okay, it's B I S M I K A A L L A H U M A dot O R G. And you can look up on that article on Aisha. I actually wrote an article on this 20 years ago. Okay, and um, I've I've laid out the facts and figures about about this marriage. Yeah. Wow. Um, from Oscar Davies, uh, Muslim apologists, there's something called pastism. <laughs> <laughs> so he's in fun of his, his presentism saying that if you judge something by the present you're using presentism you're judging something being to be okay by the past would be pastism and equally as fallacious never heard of pastism <laughs> it's a parody it's a parody of your argument um from unknown or yeshua the king is Muslim apologist, uh, Salafi. Yes. What does that word mean? Got it. I don't know. No, I'm asking uh, Muslim apologist. What, is, what does that mean? What does that word mean? Oh, it means that someone adheres to the Quran and the Sunnah and follow the uh, ways of the, the Salaf, meaning the first three generations of, of Muslims. Gotcha. 
All right. From uh, Pro Debates, they say, if a child goes through puberty at six, would he be okay with someone back then having intercourse with them? Sorry, can you repeat that again? If a child goes through puberty at six or earlier, I would ask, would he be okay with someone back then having intercourse with them? Yes, of course. Why not? <laughs> back then. Okay, back then. The keyword here being back then. Okay. That doesn't make it any better. Okay. It's, it's equally as bad no matter what time frame you put it. I don't know why you keep saying back then as if it makes it less bad. From Bitter Truth for $5, I say. I text Sahih Bukhari Hadith where Aisha said she hasn't reached puberty. Reference 5236 Muslim Y keep line. Then he needs to show the evidence. Okay, because uh, I've already re answered this so many times. Okay, so <laughs> there's nothing else to add to it. Okay, if he just wants to deny it, I mean, what else can I say? Right. Got it. From Saint Benevolent. Is it moral to have sex slaves in 2023? Uh, I guess it depends on, on the situation. Uh, I guess today <laughs> we don't practice that now. So it's not a moral or immoral discussion. Okay, there is some, I think this would be a separate topic entirely. This is about slavery per se. But we don't practice it, so it's it's moot. Okay, the question the the, 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 the the question is actually moot because we're not practicing it now. So the answer is no, it is not moral. It would be immoral to have sex slaves at any time period. From Saint Bene from Saint Beloved is, no, I'm sorry. I think I just read that. Uh, from all, oh, we got a super chat. From ES1002 for two euros. Hashtag keep men away from children. Yeah, he can go uh, falafel himself. From also, La, also Lamo, uh, for Muslim apologist, how old was Aisha when Allah showed her to Muhammad in a dream? I guess six. <laughs> Got it. Uh, from Jack Nicholson for $5, they say, does Muslim apologist believe puberty defines adulthood? Does he know the pre Pre, the prefrontal cortex required for planning and executive function still develops into the 20s? Um, yeah, the first, and to answer the first question, yes. To answer the second question, um, I would say that it depends on the, your, your situation, your condition, because back then things were extreme, so obviously the prefrontal cortex would develop faster. Okay, Today we are living times, you know, um, yeah, basically, I'm relaxing in front of my monitor. I mean, back then, do you think they would have time to do this? They would probably be working in the fields or going to war. Do you really think that they would have time to wait until they're, they're in the 20s for their prefrontal cortex to develop? Okay. Uh, super chat from Bitter Truth for $2. They say, religion based upon lie. Muslim apologists just proved it. Uh, to that, I will answer, um, without lies, Islam thrives. Okay. Uh, from also Lamo for... Uh, no, I'm sorry, I read that one. I think that is the whole list, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're at the end. Uh, we have a couple more minutes, so uh, if you do want to send your Super Chat in right now, it would be a great time to do so. Um, looks like something is... Yep, I got them all. So, uh, last words, thoughts before we wrap it up, guys? Mm, yeah, I'll let you know. Nope, I'm good. All right. So, All right, so ladies and gentlemen, can I wrap it up? What about me? I'm sorry. Oh, can I wrap it up? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Yes, yes, please. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, I've already presented uh, several points uh, regarding Aisha's marriage. Um, although I may... Yeah, you know, um, I hope that, uh, you know, Tijam, I hope you won't uh, take offense to what I say. I apologize in advance if I hurt your feelings or, you know, whatsoever. Okay, if we have, I know we're going to have serious disagreements over this. But basically, my position is that, uh, you know, uh, committing the fallacy of presentism, okay, does not, uh, you know, uh, make uh, the prophet's marriage to Aisha immoral, okay. So there is, uh, this has been practiced, uh, you know, 
uh, throughout the ages before the 20th century. Uh, it's all about survival of the fetus, okay, extending the progeny, okay, and the mortality rate also factors in. So this is something very normal back then. Of course, today we don't do this because we have so many reasons not to do this, okay. Of course, we have the problem of pedophilia and all these problems, right? This sexual crime, this they degenerate, right? So of course, uh, we don't do this. But that being said, back then there's no such thing, so things were different back then. Yeah. So that is all I have to say. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, double check to make sure we didn't get any more. Um, looks like not. Good. Okay. Oh, wait, no. Uh, from ES1002 for two euros to say, Menj, if you were in a war, would you take a kid as slave? Um, you're talking about present times and no, of course not. <laughs> All right. And uh, from Yeshua King for 499, they said, threw your Salafi scholars under the bus by rejecting the Islam Q&A and their ruling on the reliance of the traveler. Study more or stop lying. I don't bow down to scholars who uh, don't go against the uh, the, the Sunnah, right? So um, they're not uh, fallible. Okay, they do all due respect to Islam Q&A. Um, they may have differences of opinion and that's up to them, but I don't agree with them. So if I don't agree with them, it doesn't mean... Uh, I'm throwing them, I'm throwing all scholars under the bus, all right? All right. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen, uh, for this spirited debate. Thank you to everybody in the live chat who sent in questions and super chats and elevated the conversation. We really appreciate it. Uh, thank you again to the moderators and everybody who uh, helped to keep the, everything under control. Uh, and once again, thank you to the debaters who are the lifeblood of the show. So share it if you want to spread it. Like it if you loved it and subscribe. We have many more debates coming your way you don't want to miss. Our guests are linked in the description below. There's an after show link there as well. That'll be on my channel soon. Uh, thank you again, everybody. Have a great night. And remember to keep sifting out the reasonable from the unreasonable. Have a great night.